It's time for uh, what we like to call Neil's spiel. Tonight, more like a what gives. A White House that goes full throttle on anything racial, oddly silent on Sony emails that are ridiculously racial. I want you just to think about that, regardless of your views. Ferguson warrants a separate federal probe. New York, another separate federal probe. Grand juries that don't get it, so the White House says enough of it. Unless that is that sensitivity extends to Hollywood moguls. Let's just say that those at Sony are a little different. Let's just say that those top execs who email each other at Sony and all but hurl racial epitaphs are a little different. Uh, that everyone from actor William Smith to the president himself. No, this bastion is off limits. These racial slights are off topic. But that isn't the weird part. Even allowing for the clear double standard, you would think the White House would be all over the hack attack that exposed these emails and just hop to. Focus for the moment on who got into those Sony computers. Was it North Korea, Russia? Who knows? This much I do know. They did it pretty easily, and they have done it before. That's why this Sony thing is particularly troubling. It is the biggest security breach to date, and it's as if the White House has gone radio silent and decided to ignore. The former Home Depot and crisis CEO Bob Nardelli says, be afraid, be very afraid. If for no other reason, we've got our priorities mixed up. That's my big worry. Yeah, there's no question, uh, you know, Neil, I'm a lot older than you, but I've never you seen... You say that, <laughs> but I mean, I'll play along, guys. I've never seen such dysfunctionality uh, within our country. I mean, the priorities. When's the last time we talked about the national debt, $18 trillion, the GDP, jobs, fundamentals underpinning for the strength of this, of this country? And to your point, th these are not, I'm not saying they're insignificant or they aren't legitimate, but... We, you know, when you run a company, you've got to stay focused. You have to have a mission. You have to have purpose. And that's what I think we need to be focused on right now. I've, I was with a large group of CEOs last week, and the dysfunctionality that's coming out of Washington gives tremendous pause and concern for a lot of CEOs going forward into 2015. But there are enormous distractions, too, because, I mean, you have businesses to run, but you're accountable to a government that, that, that follows on uh, how much you pay overtime, to whom you pay overtime, who qualifies for overtime, who qualifies as a full-time or part-time work. So, so you're distracted by events that go way beyond just whatever the racial issue of the day is. Right? Well, e even to the point, you know, doing a lot of work now in M&A with private equity, the government is getting much more involved in telling you what you have to get rid of and giving the buyer more optionality as to what they want to buy versus what we may want to sell as part of uh, disintermediation or spins and so forth. So it's, we're seeing more and more involvement in business relative to how we should run it, what they'll approve, what the Department of Justice will approve or not approve uh, on, on a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Well, I remember in your case, you inherited some, some very sick companies each time you came on board and had to turn them around. And I, I, I think your priority was making shareholders money and keeping jobs protected. And that was your focus. And, and there might be other tangential issues. I would see the Evelyn Y. Davises and others who would bring other esoteric issues at, yes. a, at a shareholder meeting. But she kept the eye on the ball. And I, I, I think people could agree or disagree on, on the focus, but never on the mission statement. Here, I'm not sure what the mission statement is or what we're in store for over the next few years. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's scary when you think about these potential counterattacks because of the hacking. And, you know, hacking. That's scary stuff. I it's always very say, scary. Leave aside the knocks of some of the emails. I, you know, it's Hollywood. It's, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. But, but look how easily it was done. How much. How, uh, that's what worries me. Well, all of these hacks, whether it was Target, my former company, Home Depot, and now Sony. Sony's a, a great company and they've got a great reputation. Set aside the emails. It is that's just Hollywood. Do you think jobs should be lost as a result of what people wrote each other internally? You know, Neil, if everyone's email was exposed like this, I think we'd we'd all have Absolutely. chaos. So that's what I say. We'd I think all it, have chaos. That's not worth. Finding, although that will likely happen. Yes, but but I worry more about what precipitated the hacking and who was behind it. Well, again, I don't know if it's true if a preview of the film was actually sent to North Korea to get their approval before they released. I mean, you and I, mere mortals, we have to wait for right. uh, the premiere to see it, right? I would think that Un would have liked the fact that the actor portraying him was much thinner much than thin he was. But no, I guess that was I, not uh, Probably not. But, uh, you know, the hacking is a big problem. Absolutely. Cyber, uh, you know, our, our whole cyber attacks and so forth. Big issue for our government. We ought to be working on that. But again, to your point, Let's get back to priorities of reestablishing United States as a strength 
you know, a competitor among nations. Very well put. And, and, and really a global leader. Yep. He's one of the great gentlemen in American business, class act, even though he says he's much older than that. I think it's like a matter of months. Uh, anyway, uh,